Hi, I'm Kaylin Lepre with Mammoth Lakes Tourism, and I'm here with Kendra Knight, a local professional photographer, which is perfect because she's going to share some tips with us about photographing wildflowers. So thanks for being with us. My pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. This segment is brought to you in part by the New National Forest that wants to remind you to leave no trace. A great way of doing that is to leave things how you found them. So I know you really want to pick those wildflowers as souvenirs, but please leave them for everyone else to enjoy as well. You can take a photo of them and take that home with you, which leads me to my first question. Kendra, there's got to be certain times of the year that the wildflowers are in bloom up here in the Eastern Sierra, right? It does. It varies actually. Yeah. And it varies significantly depending on the snowfall or the rainfall the year prior, the season mm -hmm. prior and the water levels and the altitude, etc. So right. sometimes like in Mammoth, for example, at higher altitude, I've noticed little tiny wildflowers as early as June, lower elevation, maybe like Owens River, the wild irises bloom a little bit later. And that really varies, like I said, and right now I would not be able to give you an ETA of when the flowers are gonna bloom. But right, because every still season's stunning. different. Exactly. Yeah, and it depends on the snowfall and everything. So yes. that's a great point. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people think like a flower is so beautiful, you can go up and take a photo of it, but there's quite an art to it. What kind of tips do you have for people for taking wildflower photography? Well, I love macro photography and that's just close up and I use a hundred millimeter macro lens. I can get um, one to one, like an inch away from the flower with a hundred millimeter macro lens. Right. Um, and I like to shoot wide open, like at my apertures at 2.8, minimal depth of field, which means that my focus is really just limited to where um, I want it to be directly in that flower and the background goes really soft and it has this ethereal type glow to it. And I always shoot backlit. My flower is always backlit. And is that the same type of photography that you use like with water drop photography as well? Yes, in fact, I cheat a little bit and bring a little spray bottle with me when I go on my hikes ah. and, and I like to But you get spritz. the shot. Yeah, exactly. Well, that brings me into my next question as well. Equipment. What kind of lenses and different things would you use? If you have an SLR, a single lens reflex, like a DSLR, mm -hmm. um, I prefer a 100 millimeter macro lens and that way I can get super tight, super close up, like I said, and then... Um, if you don't have that, because many of us don't hike with a big chunky SLR, right. take your iPhone. You can still use your iPhone. Just look at the light. Really pay attention to the light. That's huge. Yeah. Also, there's this little device you can put on your camera phone mm -hmm. on the lens to get really close to a subject. So, wow. And it's super lightweight and really, really small and portable. Those are great tips. Thank you so much for sharing those with us. You're welcome. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Make sure you go to bluebirdimaging.com to check out more of Kendra's beautiful artwork. And you can also stop by the Welcome Center on your way into town. They will give you the most up-to-date on where to go to check out the wildflowers in bloom. Thank you. Thank you guys for tuning in. This has been your reminder that the mountains are calling.